Ready? Okay. So yes. We'll start. Good Let's evening, go. Asia. Welcome to episode four of Beyond Birding here on the Asian Bird Fair Online Talks. I'm Mike Lu here in Manila with Victor Yu in Taipei. Thank you for joining us here on Zoom and on Facebook Live. Tonight, we have a special guest who has an interesting topic on women empowerment from Bird Uganda Safaris, our good friend, Herbert Biaruhanga from Uganda. Hi, Herbert. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> so we're all excited to hear about what you're doing over in Uganda. It seems very interesting topic. So you have the floor now. Okay, yes. Um, yes, you are all welcome to this talk this evening, this morning, for some people who are far away, maybe Richard Foster is also in the morning, or wherever you may be, you are all welcome to this talk about what we do in Uganda. My name is Herbert. I am the managing director of Bad Uganda Safaris. Uh, I do a lot of training of people. I also do a lot of travel. I do make talk shows on international exhibitions. I organize the African Birding Expo. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very much involved in tourism and conservation activities. So a few years ago, I thought about uh, contributions to conservation and tourism in my country. And I, work, I woke up and decided to have the project for women. Uh, the project for women right. is focusing on the young women, especially those uh, who are just coming out of the universities, colleges, and other areas. Those who are interested in nature, but also the main purpose is to attract them into mainstream tourism and they're able to uh, get employed. But of course we do this outside our normal birding activities. We are crazy birders. We love to go around watching birds. But on top of that, we think we shouldn't be the only ones doing bird watching. We need to see our habitats. We need to see the environment stay green, stay intact. And we decided to bring in the women and be able to con convince them, educate them, train them, give them enough capacity to do the business and be able to contribute to conservation. We also have a young birders program we run. It's slower than the women birders because the young people have got a lot of issues, but we get the parents Parents who have um, a stake in tourism and conservation, they bring their children, we take them out, educate them, uh, give them some quiz, give them prizes, and they do appreciate. The third one is about saving the primates, which we started last year after the death of the mountain gorilla in Uganda. It was killed by someone from the community, and we decided to give a hand and started a project for saving primates, which is doing a fantastic job. So you are all welcome to this show. It should be within um, 30 minutes, and then we, we have more time to interact. Um, whoops. OK, that's where Uganda is, in East Africa. Uh, we are located in Kampala. But Uganda is a landlocked country, as you can see, surrounded by South Sudan, Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania in the south. So we don't have direct access to the ocean, but that is an advantage, maybe at some point. We have got fantastic forests. Uh, we have got very virgin forests. We have got very good freshwater bodies that attract many species of birds and salt waters all over the place. We have got quite a number of habitats in the country. <clears throat> um, 
riverine forests, arid conditions. So it's a fantastic place to be. So what do we do in conservation beyond birding? We have got Women Birders Project. We have got Young Birders Project and Saving Primates. So the Women Birders Project was established in 2013 with about 30 girls. And all these 30 girls, I must say, have jobs, have got employment, they have got businesses. They are all engaged in some way. Others have been married, but they still stay in conservation activities. Others are doing research on Shubil. Others are doing research on business. And they are all still engaged in the tourism and conservation business. So we give them skills in budding to make sure they earn a living, but also to help them understand that they can even use bird watching as a business and be good examples of the communities and villages where they come from, that they can use natural resources in alternative means to earn a living. We also educate them and train them in business, establishing small businesses so that they can pay attention to doing more business and maybe earn a living which can give them, improve on their livelihoods. And this has been happening as you will see in the presentation. We have managed to help them put up a website, womenbirders.org. Uh, it is sponsored by Bad Uganda Safaris. We've started sending some of them to attend the international exhibitions. We've sent the chairperson to America twice and UK to be able to expose, to market their organization. And uh, it is helping them already. They're already getting some businesses people come looking for them. So what else do we do? We also help them to skin various services. We partner with the Pride, uh, Ride for a Woman project in Bindi. If they, actually they are part of us, they are part of our product. But again, we continue to partner with them and bring in skills to train people. And we see now tourists come and they engage them and give them some money when they teach them on how to do weaving, how to make baskets. Like you see in the photograph there, the lady is trying to learn how to uh, make a basket. <clears throat> we also teach them in sustainable use of natural resources. How can they be able to use? Of course, they use these materials to make baskets, to make mats and other um, crafts which they use to make money. They actually, we have found out that the women can be a very, very good example of conservation education. In areas where we engage people in Kibara Forest, in Bwindi areas, in Bedongo, there's quite big improvement of uh, the community paying attention to conservation. In fact, the evidence is that we've seen people reporting people who go to their areas to hunt animal, people who go to their areas to do illegal stuff in the, in, the, in the conservation areas. So we do train them in business skills, as you will see some of them who have started businesses, but they still remain in tourism. And I think that's very good for them. Of course, some of them, as I said, they get skills in different areas, like, you know, the here they make, clothes, they make uniforms, they make, they make lots of things The people go into the shop. The tourists go to their shop and buy a lot of stuff and leave them some money. So these people, they now entirely depend on this project. These are 300 women who are in Bindi under the same project, Right for a Woman, which we partner with. Like I said, the owners are our product and they have gone ahead to establish such a fantastic project in that area. So you can be assured of the gorillas being safe, the gorilla habitat being safe because they have got alternative means of survival. This is one of the classic stories. Uh, this lady is one of the leading bad guys in the country. We trained her, she was a ranger. And I'm so proud that she's managed to put up a lodge, very nice lodge now. 
and she has a tour company. I was there actually last week. She even sponsored a uh, training of the reptiles. Uh, we have got another club of reptiles which we work with, of reptiles guys. This lady you see, Miriam, is one of those products from us. She started her own company. She's now among the best performers of the young women in the country. She travels all over the world looking for business. She was able to connect with the American embassy and they took them to the United States to do the training there in business skills. And she is doing well. This is the lady I'm talking about, the one in front, Evelyn. She came to us after the university and she became our friend and we gave her skills and she went back home and worked on a project over the pygmies, but she continued and established one right for a woman project, which I think is doing very well at the moment. She's been traveling around the country. She's going to United States, she's going to UK. You know, people inviting her because of this amazing project. We are so proud of her because she's like our child of bad Uganda safaris. So we have got the project for young birders. We call them wildlife explorers, in other words. Uh, a few years ago, we thought this was very important that we start introducing young people into conservation activities involving bird watching. <clears throat> so beyond bird watching, we take them out uh, to appreciate nature. We spend a whole day in, in the wild there. They are learning about insects. They are learning about uh, plants, our cultures. And they ask a lot of questions. Sometimes we give them um, activities to sit down and uh, make some drawings. And the, the best drawings, of course, attract the bigger prizes. But still, everybody becomes a winner. And the numbers are increasing. We hope after COVID, if nothing happens, uh, we shall get more children coming on board because the parents really wanted this project so much. So we have got a team that works with it, uh, that we have trained, which will take them out. Of course, like you said, that lady ahead, they take them out and they stay with them for half day on one of the days of the week. They are brought by their parents. They pay a small fee to cater for their transport and maybe um, water to drink because we do not, we don't um, allow anybody from us to feed them. So the parents feed their children. They come with their food, they pack it. For us, what we offer, we offer bottled water. If the children pack them, Jesus says it's okay. <clears throat> but the children are very, very amazing. When we took them, uh, the last group I took to Queen the Beast National Park, they were asking me fantastic questions about conservation. What are we going to do if these animals get finished, if the people aren't uh, approaching them? Because they always see on television some people talking about poaching, hunting, and they say, what are we going to do with this? Uh, they all say, uh, they ask about the fate of the elephants. If they get finished, where shall we get more elephants? You can see those kids, they draw, they get, get all this manila paper, they sit down and make some drawings. Very enthusiastic, the kids do a lot of drawing and they're always happy to do it. And they can tell you there's a lot of competition. They all do very, very well. There's one guy, uh, one kid I think is now about, about 15 years. I think he will be one of those first local people to make a field guidebook for Uganda. He's got the skill of art and parents are very supportive. So here we have the other project, the Saving Primates Project. Uh, this project started where, like I said, after the killing of the mountain gorilla in Buindi. So Uganda has over 15 species of, of, of primates. Uh, some of these are rare, some of these are endemic. And we have three which are tracked officially, mountain gorillas. We have mountain gorillas, we have uh, um, 
chimpanzees and golden monkeys. And these are found in different parts of the country, well distributed. So this guy's golden monkey in Mgehinga uh, is one of those rare monkeys. Uh, oh, what's happening? Oh, sorry. Okay. I don't know what's this. There's a red line on my screen. Um, this lost monkey is found, as you can see on the map, is found in that small part of the African continent and a few of them happen to be in Uganda and some parts of Rwanda. One of the beautiful monkeys. Now this one, this photograph I took it last month in Semuliki Forest. If you see on the map, you see that blue circle. That's what this monkey is only found. It's part of those many other red, red colobuses, but this one was found out to be a species of its own. So it's also now endemic to that area, we hope. Uh, somewhere, somewhere we might start uh, tracking them. So that's found in the uh forest, which is uh, deep in the southwest of this country, in the western part of the country, but bordering with Congo. Then the mountain gorillas, as you can see, are only found on that black spot of Uganda, Rwanda, and DRC. So it's one of those that um, have been a major concern of the people in Uganda and the three other countries. It brings quite a number of people. It's one of those um, golden, I would say, the iconic tourist attractions of this country. It brings quite a number of people uh, followed by uh, mammals, of course, budding competes with them. Um, then we started this project last year after the entire days of the silverback. As you can see, when they grow to this maturity, they get the backs become silver and we make them, we call them silverbacks. So unfortunately, one member of the community went out during the COVID time to do the hunting, looking for antelopes. And he found himself in close contact with this mountain gorilla, the silverback. And because the silverback was trying to defend the females, the family, and they fought and he killed it. But of course, when he killed it, the news came out and we all came up in arms, expect concerns, everybody was not happy, all the conservationist communities. And remember this was the time of lockdown when we are all under lockdown. So, but the, the, the communities worked with, with government, with security forces, and he was arrested and he was taken to courts of law and he was prosecuted and is now in prison serving his punishment. But of course, we could not sit down. We said this was very, very bad. We cannot accept it to continue like this. So we thought the best thing is to sustain the communities. We know they were in very bad times. Uh, everybody's in lockdown and we decided to go in. And we started as a relief supply for food, to help the porters and the guys from the community to be able to appreciate the role of tourism, but also divert them from hunting in the forest, looking for food. So we have quite a number of groups, about 10 groups which are involved, which are managed to meet. We've been meeting them since last year. We've got um, about nine groups from uh, Bundi area surrounding wind area, uh, that's Rubuguli, Teco, San Riro, the Bad Guys Club there, the United Reformed Poachers, who are one of those that you are doing uh, poaching. And then we have, uh, we actually got a number of groups of Reformed Poachers around the park because they are poachers, but 
uh, the, the, the government came up with a plan to convince them to stop poaching and put them in groups. But of course, uh, the information we gathered, some of them are threatening to go back to poaching because they're not seeing any benefits of government bringing them out, um, convincing them not to stop poaching. So the, the groups also include the handicraft of women. Uh, there is one association which is called Wind Handicraft Women Rafiki Association. The gorilla which was killed was called Rafiki. So they created this association in memory of Rafiki to show the others not to do it, not, not to go to the forest again. In fact, we helped them to form this association when we went there a few months ago. Of course, we have worked with Right for a Woman and Uganda Safari Guide Association members who happen to be in that area. So one of those groups is uh, Bohoma Exposures that we met. Of course, I didn't want to give many slides about the photographs of the different groups, um, but you can see them somewhere on the website. So we sat with these, with these groups and they told us all their challenges and we tried our best to think through. I have a team of three, very committed guys. We sit down here and plan and make sure let's make a contribution until there is you know, a change in the mindset of the people. So we have also been moving, that is mean the photograph. We've been moving to some of these groups, sit with them, educate them and tell them, you know, please stop the killing of the animals. Don't go back to the forest. It's not the best thing you can do. We will continue work with you and maybe give them some skills. Uh, we have also promised them to, if we get resources, we shall start up, help them start a small bank, a community bank where they can lend them in, keep money and lend, in, lend out for businesses. Uh, of course, with the limitations. In this country, there are laws now which allow people to have uh, small cooperatives uh, called circles savings and uh, cooperatives so they will be able to have some money to do business instead of going to the forest to depend on the natural resources we met a group of about 100 people that group near the where the the gorilla was killed so in our supplies we did uh, during that covid time we knew the porters these porters and local guides around the wind were going to suffer a lot they were actually suffering a little because none of them had anything to eat because they had entire, you know, they entirely spent their time on, uh, on gorilla business. When tourists go there, they use them, they pay them money. Each one is paid $20, of course, for carrying luggage or bags of the people. And that's all they depend on. So we thought, no, we need to put them some, to put them some contribution so that they don't run away from tourism, they don't run away and become a problem to conservation. So it worked very well. People stayed on, as you can see, some of the, these ladies who are guides, uh, some of them who are porters, were able to get some good share of food. And we also got other people who have been supporting it, taking in some food there. Uh, of course, our next supply will be going in, in April, um, but it will be a different approach, which shall be supplying seeds. Uh, about 500 porters and guides around Bindi and Mugahinga National Park were bene I mean, have benefited from this uh, food, food release supply for, from us. Some of you have contributed to this and we thank you very much, those who have contributed to this cause. So what are we doing now? Uh, we are doing the training of these guys and porters in the prevention of COVID transmission to primates, especially to the mountain gorillas and chimpanzees. This is a running around Mugahinga, Kibale, Wind Impenetrable, in Western Uganda. Over 300 people have been trained so far. We hope to go back and do more training in May. So it's... Uh, Something we thought is very, very important, much as we are training them to giving them skills of how to make money or how to survive, but still we give them you know, more training on how to avoid transmitting 
uh, the COVID-19 to the mountain gorillas because once the land is in them, we might have a bigger problem uh, which we may fail, be, fail to handle. We've been distributing maize flour and beans. Of course, COVID has swept major income for porters and guides. We have distributed over 20 tons of maize and five tons of beans since May 2020 around the Kibale and Gwindi Forest. We think, we think that when they have seeds, they are able to grow their own food and stop buying because buying food may not be sustainable at all. Because you know, during the time of work, they had not grown so much, they were depending entirely on tourism activities. We also have been distributing materials such as maize seeds, uh, which like I said earlier, are doing very well. We get them from the farmers. Some of them actually give us discounted prices because they believe that if animals are not tampered with, well, the, the, the nature remains intact and they'll get rains. So the, we, we've been uh, distributing materials for, for growing. And the next one, I think you're going to supply more beans and so, soy, no, soya beans. Uh, then we shall do uh, the maize flour, maize seeds, of course, but potatoes, potato veins, we want to give them because in some areas of Kigezi, they grow a lot of potatoes. Sorghum uh, is going to be given to them, and Irish potatoes. Irish potatoes are basically the main dish, the main food they have on a daily basis. So we think we shall give them more seeds of Irish potatoes so that they're able to grow more and be able to sustain themselves even when the business resumes. Yes, how can you join us to do this kind of work? You're welcome to join us. Um, you're welcome to join us. And we save the primates of this African to our premise of Africa together. You can join us through the website of Saving Primates. You come in there and go on and see what we do. Give your support where you can, give a donation where you can. It's okay. We shall appreciate that. Or even if you travel with us, 10% of the proceeds will go to this conservation uh, efforts that we are involved in. So with those few words, I thank you very much for joining us. Now I'm open to questions. Thank you, Victor and the team. Over to you. Hey, thank you, Herbert. You may uh, stop sharing now, please. Yes, thank you, Herbert. We we just listened to a wonderful, wonderful stories from Uganda and what you have been doing. And I know you will keep doing this all the way. But um, I, I want to ask, you know, why do you do a woman program? Sorry, say it again? Why, why do you do the, the, the woman um, bird guys program? Why do you train them as a bird guy? Yes, the women, uh, they, are, they are very, very good agents of, for destruction of, of nature. Women in Africa do a lot of home chores. They are the people who do a lot of cooking. They are known to be in the kitchen all the time. They are known to go and search for firewood. They cut the trees. They do a lot of destruction. So we thought that if we bring them out and get them engaged in commercial services and offering services to the tourists who come into the country, they will improve on their livelihoods, but also they will think of alternative means of survival instead of going to depend on the natural resources. And that's what is happening now, because if I give an example of Harriet, I give an example of Jews and other women we have interacted with in some other areas. They have diverted now. They do not uh, depend on the natural resources. They only do it uh, sustainably. They would rather get the visitors 
and making money from the vista than making money from the making money from the uh, making money from the natural resources. But also, they become very good examples for the community because um, the other women will look at them and say, wow, what can we do? Because for example, in Kibale Forest, um, we now have a young group of women, about 20 of them that have formed a group and they always go out for bad watching, they're all working hard. And the schools have already identified them. They send their students for, uh, for internship and they are training them, meaning that the message has really touched on the ground and all these people are not going to destroy nature. Uh, it's also important that the, 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 these women will become mothers. If you have uh, 20 out of 30 teaching their children to conserve, talking about uh, benefits of conservation and tourism, I can tell you there will be a big impact. That's why we are trying to focus on the areas around the protected areas so that they are able to become very good examples. I know government has been trying to do this as well, but our approach goes directly to people and we want to see impact. That's why we keep following them wherever they are, uh, try to make sure that we, we keep them engaged and also help them get jobs. So we thought that would be a very good approach, a very good contribution to conservation and it is working well. Yeah, I think you, you, you're doing a great job because you know, even, even in, in other places in the world, in, in Western countries, there are not too many women birders or even the women uh, the bird guys. I think you, you, you are doing a great, great work. Thank you very much. And what about, their, the, what about their family? Do their, do their family support the, all these girls? Yes, actually, most of them are supported by their families. Uh, a few of them may have some challenge here and there, but most of them support them because uh, they, they see them can go and come back um, safe. And they have given them an assurance that they are very safe. They don't have any problem. Of course, they have some challenges of you know, uh, cultural related challenges like they must get married at another stage. People are forced to get married, of course, even after the university, they think we have finished the university, therefore we should get married. Uh, but, you know, with time, people are beginning to understand. Even those who get married, they come back. They get, they make children, but they come back. In fact, yesterday, there's one of our girls who got uh, married and she produced twins recently, I think uh, about a year ago. And she's come back to me, she told me yesterday, uh, I want uh, a new book, I want to buy a book, I want to continue with bird watching because I've realized that I have children now and they need school fees. I cannot do much without engagement. So I'm coming back to my roots. So she's going to buy a new book and she wants to continue bird watching. So that's a very good sign that the things are working well. Great, thank you. Uh, Francisco, do you have a question? Uh, Francisco. Uh, Francisco, if, if, if you have a question. Yes, yes, please. Sorry, we, we, we cannot hear you. Hi. Yeah, maybe the ball. I'm in a walking. Hi. Okay. Yeah, okay. Go ahead now. Oh, no, we don't hear you, Francisco. Nope. Sorry, Francisco. We no, we we don't hear you. Audio problem. Yes. Okay, uh Francisco, would you write your question at the chat room? Oh, uh, okay, no, it's okay, right? Just Francisco. go ahead. So, sorry about that. Question. Uh, I'm a field person, not a computer person. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's, okay. Uh, yes. no, it's okay, right? I, 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 I have so, so, I have uh, so many questions. Person, not a computer person. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, yes. 
Uh, I, 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 I turn, have, off your, turn off your phone. Uh, 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 the first question is, the first question is, uh, when is the best time to go? Where is the best place to go to see the gorilla? And if, uh, when is the best time to go? Where is the best place to go? To see you have the to gorilla? mute your Facebook. And if, uh, when is the best uh, maybe that's the maybe that's the problem. Can you mute your Facebook first? Yeah, yeah. mute your yeah. Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That right. was the problem. Okay. 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 So where is the when is the best time to go and where is the best place to go to see the gorilla? And, and, and the question about conservation, yeah. if there are still people going hunting in the forest, uh, how well is the distribution of the funds and the profit that is coming from ecotourism to be distributed among the whole community? So they all benefit on these funds and they don't need to go hunting to have something to eat. Those are the two questions. Thank you very much. Thank you for the very beautiful question, Francis. Um, when and when the best time to go for gorilla tracking? All the year round, the best time to go for gorilla tracking. All right. uh, of course, we have got wet and dry seasons uh, during April and October, it is raining, but that does not stop the activity. People still go and see the gorillas in the rains. It may be slippery because of the slopes. It may require some uh, higher levels of energy, but you can do all that throughout the year. But for our clients, we always advise them to come during the month of May to September and November to March. That's when we get them there. Uh, there is no specific um, reasons to give that this is the best group or this is the best place to see. Gorillas are always moving. They do not stop in one area so that you can find them. They continue going. The tracking exercise is continuous. They keep tracking them every day. They come and see them and when you come in, then we the, 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 they go and start from where they stopped yesterday. So the best place, I would say, when you make a reservation and you go down there to see the mountain gorillas, then it depends on uh, which group is probably nearby, but you cannot be guaranteed that it's going to be closer. But all gorilla experience is fantastic. You know, it's a one-time experience many times. People say that, and it's, uh, you just just have to make a decision and say, I am going. They are all good for gorilla tracking. So conservation uh, in Uganda, which is uh, managed by both government and private sector, uh, is, of course, uh, majorly in the hands of Uganda Wildlife Authority, which is the government agency in charge of conservation. So they have got agreement with the communities. They give them 20% of the gate collection every year. They give it to communities which live around the protected areas and they use local authorities and local associations. And of course the needs of the people are always many. So sometimes not all of them get benefits, but in principle, they really get this money and has built schools the communities decide what they want. They need to decide, they decide on their priorities in their, in their meetings and what government does, it monitors them. Of course, there are some challenges here and there, but not every group. Others have benefited very well, others have not benefited. So hunting is a question of culture. Some people hunt traditionally as a culture. There are some groups which must go hunting because they've been hunting since time is immemorial. But what would be more important is that the government and of course working with others like us, they are trying to convince the community to stop it. And I think majorly in many areas it is stopping. 
Uh, it's because of you know food that you have to go and look for some of these few things, but it will stop. Then poaching, of course, is uh, being uh, handled very well, and the government is with the security. They are doing a lot of work to make sure that all the wildlife is protected. So the money comes, it is distributed to the people, and they benefit. If few people don't benefit, of course, we're not to be happy. Over to you, Victor. Excellent. So, okay, Francisco. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's still work to be done so they don't go hunting and killing gorillas. It's so sad for me to hear that. I wanna see a silverback. How bad the rest of the group will stay without a silverback leading them? That's uh, yes. It's a it worry a for me. It was a big question. We are all worried about it. But of course, as soon as the the big boss died, the young one, the black bugs, took over. So, in fact, I want to go and track them in May. I will be able to see how they are faring and maybe inform the world uh, how that group is doing. So probably in May or June, I'll be able to give another talk about the experience of that same group that lost the silver bug. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Francisco, and thank you, Herbert. And we have a question uh, from Facebook from Ana Lu from uh, Ecuador. He said that, um, how much do they, do the, the woman guys make per day? And is that enough to maintain their homes? And how many amount a year do they have to work? Well, that's a very good question. Very, very good question. It's uh, a young group uh, that is, uh, we've been training and uh, they're becoming uh, appreciated, they're getting appreciated into the professional system and we are starting the licensing exercises. Of course, we've been involved in the development of the um, training of the assessors for skills. So the women guides will be earning uh, more than $50 a day, especially those who are level one. The level two may earn $100 a day. And there is a possibility that if they work three months in a year, uh, those are 90 days, they will survive very well. But even if they worked for two months, I was calculating it with one of the girls, Percy, uh, last week we were discussing, you know, how a, a girl can survive if she's not yet married, even if she got uh, only two months in a year and she's a very, you know, very careful person, she can still get the little man and engage in other businesses like a small shops or selling other things or maybe going to farming here and there, growing a few things, vegetables, and of course, investing in, in reading. They can earn a living. They can still survive. That's minimum they can survive. But we hope, we hope that now that bird watching in Uganda is growing at a very fast speed, we think all these girls will be engaged if, in fact, if there wasn't COVID, by now, all our girls will be out in the field. Because even now as I speak, the ones I'm in touch with uh, all the time about Six of them who have told me they have already uh, bookings of about four trips each for this year. So there's progress. Okay. So yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, one more question from 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 Anna Lucy. Anna Lu. He said that um, the women, those women who are not guys. Do they participate in ecotourism with the handicraft or food or other things? Yes, there are um, women who are, of course, not guides, but uh, they, 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 they are always with us, they interact with us. When you go to the communities, they get to know. And they are involved in uh, other services. They have restaurants, they have crafts, they have uh, the studio shops, they have uh, you know something they're doing, uh, which is... Um, which makes them survive around the protected areas. Kibale is one of those areas. Bundi is one of those areas. People have restaurants. They have uh, they have something they are doing that uh, makes money from the tourists. Yeah, and I also want to know why they, they, they only work two months a year. No, they don't. They, they don't work two months a year. I was just giving as an example in case, just in case. 
Okay. Uh, if, if, what, what does a woman need to survive in a year? But if they got a chance of getting 12 months engagement, that would be the best, of course. Yeah, okay. But you know, tourists yeah. coming to Uganda, they, they come in seasons. And usually the high, most high season is May to September. But of course, for bird watchers, they will come throughout the year because most of the birders are people who have worked and maybe retired. So they come throughout the year. So if they get a chance of getting engaged for the whole year, that would be my prayer. I would be the most smiling person. Okay. Anna, please say like, if, you, if you're okay with Herbert's answer. <laughs> There's a question from, from, from Facebook. Yes, uh, are there more questions to Herbert? This is a great opportunity to know more about Uganda. About birds, about yes. wildlife, about the, the conservation work. I have a question. Yes, yes, please. No one. Yeah. Um Herbert, your maps are very interesting because it shows how tiny the patches are, where the endemics are. And it's actually very scary because you know, uh, the global climate being what it is. Uh, one disaster and you wipe out a population. So I was wondering in the programs that involve women, um, are there uh, any that are related to um, saving habitats? If, uh, even if it's uh, still at the education uh, level. Because I do know that um, Women anywhere, whatever culture, they exercise very strong social influence over teenagers, kids, and uh, privately also their husbands. So they are able to sway uh, decision making. Yes, uh, in here in Uganda, I must uh, give you confidence that things have changed. I know culture still plays a role, uh, but things have changed. The most, most of the young people, young, young generation, I would say 25 years and above, now make independent decisions. Uh, even when they marry, the, the husbands, of course, are also educated. They, it's not the same as our parents did. Uh, most of the girls are free to make their own decisions. They work. Uh, a lot of young people now cannot sit at home because I remember my father was telling my mother that she doesn't have to work, she can stay at home. But I cannot, I cannot afford to live with a woman who doesn't work because when she works, she helps me, I help her and we work together. So we don't, we see that culture dying and the husbands, of course, the husbands of today have realized they cannot tell their wives not to go to work. They all want them to go and work so that they can continue to the development. It happens in the conservation as well. Yeah. So it is now a two-way thing. Everybody's contributing. Although we still have, of course, few groups, few families, which are still uh, very conservative. They still believe that some girls should not even go to school. Even when the government has put a policy that all girls must go to school, all children must attend education, free education, free education up to secondary school. But some people still say, I don't want to educate a girl. I just want a girl to bring me cows through dowry payment. But if the government gets to know, they take them to jail. Oh, oh. oh. interesting. Yeah. On, on the pockets, um, uh, on the maps, uh, where uh, it, it, have there been instances where habitat destruction I'm sure, I'm sure it's been a challenge as well. Because your maps are very interesting, right? Yeah, you showed at least three species where they're only found in these tiny pockets on the map. So apart from poaching, you know, what other uh, programs, women related or not, for you know, uh, conserving? You see, the, the, the government is very, very much uh, involved in conservation with new laws. In fact, we have a new law now, uh, the Wildlife Act. But that aside, the Uganda Wildlife Authority, which is in charge of conservation, makes sure they even recruit ladies as rangers. 
so that uh, they can carry out conservation messages quickly to the fellow women in the communities. It's not like it used to be male dominating the forces of rangers, but now we have got ladies who are there, have been involved in the training of those rangers uh, for some time. They, they actually do a good job and they are actually much better now because it is easier to talk to the fellow women and they understand. That makes a lot of sense. Well, not just women guides, women rangers as well. That's very interesting. Thank you, Herbert. You're welcome. All right, one more question from Anadu. She wants to know, uh, do tourists ask for any male guy or woman guy? How do you promote female guys? Uh, fantastic. In fact, in fact, as I speak now, I have three requests from tourists who have said, I want a woman bad guy. And some of them tell me the names that I want so-and-so to guide me, which I think is very good because um, I think they do it for promotion or they have heard from other people that the guides were, very, were doing very well. Usually the women guides are, I'm not, I'm not being a uh, uh, fan on this, but they have always been um, very careful. They are, they, they, when they know something, they know it very well. And of course, they know how to handle groups. I know all of those they have asked for, they have handled other groups before, and now they say they are the best they want. So that's what it is. That's fantastic. So do, do male guys feel threat? <laughs> Some people feel threatened, but let me give you an example. Last uh, 2019, we had a discussion of the guides and we had the prizes. And I can tell you, the, 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 the women birders who came from the rural areas took away all the prizes because they were able to identify cause of the birds. And some of the male counterparts who live in urban areas could not even identify single cause of the birds. So if, if they don't like it, it's up to them. The girls are coming out massive, I mean aggressively, and they are doing very well. So if they, if they win, they win, no problem. That is equal, equality we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Hey, and um, Emily, I know you have a question. Do you want to ask the question? Hi, Emily. Hello, Emily. Or do you want me to read the question for you? So, um, her brother, that's, that's Emily's question. What what did you do? Sway those poachers to protect the primates? Yes, uh, the poachers at the moment, we are engaging them in different activities so that they can be uh, engaged in other economic activities. Um, the group, one, one of, uh, two, two groups in Bundi, uh, they are going to be, they have already started getting involved in beekeeping and they're making money out of it because honey is you know, selling very well in the country and they can even export it. Others uh, will be buying machines for coffee making because Uganda is a coffee producing country and we shall be placing these coffee machines in different groups so that they can start making, uh, they have a restaurant which can sell good coffee to the tourists and even the local people and make an alternative there. But also, like I said in my presentation, uh, in some of the groups they have requested that if we can help them uh, start cooperatives and small banks in the rural areas so that they can lend money and borrow within their area. So we are already engaging some experts. I was talking to uh, a project this, like yesterday and probably they will come up and first go there and study them and see if we can help them start a microfinance system in some of two groups. So when you do that, then you are engaging them in other economic activities. It means they will not go back to the forest to look for you know, natural resources. And of course, they have to take care of their children. They want their children to go to school. They want their children to feed well. So they need some income. So that's the most important thing because if no. the children are not doing anything, then it becomes a challenge. So that's where we are going to be concentrating our energies. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, are there more questions? Oh, we have a comment from Jaini Kamukisha, who is also from Uganda, that uh, the maps may look small, but the areas are actually big, protected even with pillars marking the boundary. Say it again. The, the maps may look small, but the areas are actually big and protected with pillars marking the boundary. They are so huge. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, we have a problem, however. Okay. It's so huge. It's a forest. Oh, wait, 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 Herbert. Okay. Okay. You hear me now? Yeah, say it again, please. Just break connection. Yes. Very good. Okay. Now the the that small area of the forest you saw on the map is actually huge. You can walk uh, within Uganda. It's about it's about um, thirty kilometers across, and you still cross into the DRC some area, maybe another thirty forty kilometers. It's just a small dot on the map, but on the ground it's a huge area. You cannot just walk uh, back and forth and finish it. It's huge. There's another question I've seen. Uh, about the trip cost. A trip cost, Francis, it depends on the group you have. It depends on the number of days you have. It depends on type of hotels you want to stay in. So once you contact us, we'll take you through all that and be able to guide you on what, on how, on what the price can be. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, before I forget, so let's take a group photo now, all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, those, uh, yes, guys, please turn on your camera, please. Emily. <laughs> all right. Johnny. Gumbo. Hello, Gumbo. And Johnny. Hey, Johnny, it's Herbert who's talking. He's been writing. It's been busy writing. Okay. All right, let's just look at the camera and smile and three, two, one. Okay, thank you. All right, so keep asking if you have further questions. Oh, here's Johnny. Oh, Johnny is oh, on. Johnny. <laughs> okay. Hey. Hey. Luan. Luan. Uh, let's take another shot. Emily. No, <laughs> wala Okay. Uh, Victor, everyone's yeah, ready. Yeah, but we, we, we can take a shot later, actually. Okay. okay. Let's take another shot. Okay, uh -huh. let's do it again. Now we have Johnny. Gombo, Gombo. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we, we just let him keep hiding. Okay. One, two, three. No, okay. Thank, so thank you. I have two photos. Yeah. Right, okay, keep asking questions. If, if they have further questions. More questions. More questions? All right. Before you ask for the more questions. Uh, Mike, where are we going to next week? Okay. Well, before I say that, let's say thank you first to everyone who joined us on Zoom. Uh, just to, for people to get to know each other. We have uh, Luan and Emily from the Philippines, uh, Dr. Gambo from Mongolia, uh, Johnny and Herbert from Uganda, Kusum from Sri Lanka, uh, Mardi from Cambodia, Victor and Richard from Taiwan, and our special friend Francisco from Ecuador. He will actually be one of our speakers in May. All right. All right. All right. 
So next week, our speaker is Scott Persner of Taiwan. He will uh, tell us about his participation in the first, uh, in developing the first Taiwan National Bird Report. So that'll be an interesting. Scott is an American expat who works for the Taiwan Wild Bird Federation. Wow. That's an important milestone for Taiwan. I was in Ecuador, Francis. Really? You, yeah, how did you yes, like I it? I was in very nice. It's like Uganda. I went to Galapagos. Oh, fantastic. It's one of the most fantastic places. Next time you've got to go to the Amazon. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Amazon, Galapagos, uh, Northwest, Cloud Forest, mountains. We have it all. I did all that. All country. I went to Antana. Antisana to see condors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'll go to Galapagos and I go to next year. That's my Come plan. Come with me. Yes. I'll show you around. <laughs> certainly, certainly. <laughs> okay. Right. Fantastic. So thank you again, Herbert. That's a great presentation. We learned a lot from you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. for joining us. Thank you. And thank my, my co host, my friend, Mike Lou. So we'll see you next week. Okay. Great. Thank you. Same Good time. night, guys. Same see time. You next yeah. week, right? Have a Thank nice you weekend, very much. Everybody. Thank you Cheers. very much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone.